Hey everybody, welcome back to the program. Today we're doing another episode of Versus. This is where I look at two versions of the same record made in different countries. We'll examine the similarities and differences in order to figure out which one I think is the best version. And this time we'll be tackling the Rolling Stones' fourth studio album, Aftermath, originally released in 1966. This is UK versus USA. As I mentioned at the top, Aftermath is the fourth Rolling Stones album released in the UK, and it's their sixth overall album released in the US. It's widely considered to be the band's creative breakthrough, as it's their first record where they wrote all the songs, but it's also notable for incorporating music theory and instruments beyond their previous albums, which were much more based on traditional blues and R&B. It's also the first Stones album to be recorded entirely in the US at the RCA Studios in Los Angeles, and it's one of the first pop rock albums to have a runtime of over 50 minutes. And it's interesting because at one point, Aftermath was going to be a soundtrack to a film they were going to make, but plans fell through when Mick Jagger didn't like the attached director. Their manager, Andrew Oldham, wanted to title the album Could You Walk on the Water and have it be a gatefold cover with six pages of band photos. Decca Records rejected this as it would be too expensive, and they also said no to the title because their US distributor felt it would anger American Christians as it could be seen as blasphemous. The final UK cover was designed by Oldham under the pseudonym Sandy Beach and was released in April of 1966. For the US version, London Records made a new cover with a photo meant to evoke the burgeoning psychedelic movement. This album was released in either late June or July of 1966. Alright, real quick for those of you who are keeping score, both of these pressings come from the reissue, the 2023 reissue of the Rolling Stones and Mono box set. Alright, so with all that said, let's talk about the cover art here. We're going to start with the UK release. And I really like this photo. I like the way it has a very high contrast. I like this purple color. Uh, I like the way Aftermath is split up here. It feels very well balanced and this white border is very nice. Now, what's interesting though, is you'll notice even with original pressings, depending on where they were made, you'll see a variance in, in colors here. So it might range from like a pink all the way to like this more purplish hue, almost to like a dusty brown color. It's really interesting. For the US version, London went with a color photo of the band with what I believe to be some motion blur going on here. The placement of this text here leaves a little bit to be desired because it leaves this black space here and I don't think they really utilize all the cover here. And I don't love how it says including painted black here. It just feels like it cheapens the overall experience. Uh, it just would have been cleaner, I think, just having it that way. Now, the back covers for both versions are almost identical. The two main differences are found on the left side here. For the UK release, uh, we have the album title and band name repeated three times, and then you have this photo montage here. And then on the US release, same photo montage, but they, you know, <laughs> turned up the contrast quite a bit. And then you have uh, the same font for uh, the title and the band name as on the front cover. And I really like this. So overall, I gotta say, I much prefer the UK cover art. I think it's a better photo. And from a design standpoint, it just looks cleaner, more timeless. Uh, the photo for the US release, while interesting, doesn't feel as striking as the UK release. It feels more like the inside gatefold uh, image or like a back cover image, or maybe, maybe even like a seven inch single uh, picture sleeve. But for the back cover, <laughs> I think the, U the US version looks a lot better. I think it just uh, fits the overall theme better, the black lines. I just think it looks really good. I, you know, in a perfect world, this would be my front and this would be my back cover. But ultimately, uh, since the front cover is the most important, I'm gonna have to go with the UK release for this round. All right, so now we've come to the most important aspect, the music, and the main difference is that the US version omits four songs, but then adds in the hit Paint It Black for a total of 11 songs, compared to the UK's 14. Now the missing UK songs are Mother's Little Helper, Out of Time, Take It or Leave It, and What To Do. Now I'm sure most of you already know all this, but it's always good to mention that this was a pretty common practice during the 60s. Now, the reason that the US version has fewer tracks is because of money. 
Now, the way songwriting royalties were handled in the UK meant that each song represented a percentage of the total royalty paid. It was essentially one set price for the whole record, and out of 14 tracks, one song would be 1 14th of the total. In the US, each song had a set cost, so the more songs, the more money per record had to be paid out. And so because of this difference, it was common for albums in America to have 12 tracks and records in the UK to have 14 during the 60s. Also, to a lesser extent, in the UK, singles were almost never released onto albums as it was seen as double dipping, whereas in the US, it was very common to put hit singles onto albums in order to increase sales, which is why they replaced Mother's Little Helper with Paint It Black as it was already a hit in the UK. Oh, and I wanted to touch on the fact that uh, the US version only has 11 songs instead of the usual 12. And my hunch is because of the fact that Going Home is over 10 minutes long, I think London Records felt uh, justified in, in giving consumers 11 songs instead of the usual 12 because that song's really long. And if they could save a couple bucks here and there, might as well do it, right? So that's what I'm thinking. I, I, I don't have any sources to back that up, but that's my hunch. All right, now getting back to these, I think both releases have a good running order, and I do like how side two of the US release ends with Going Home. I think it leaves the album on a better note than what to do on the UK version. That being said though, I'm partial to the length of the UK release because it's more stones, and I really like the songs Out of Time and Take It or Leave It. Ultimately though, I'm torn between these two because Paint It Black is one of my all-time favorite songs by the group, but so is Mother's Little Helper, and it's a shame they aren't on the same album, even though they were recorded during the same sessions. In a perfect world, I would remove the rather tame UK album closer What To Do and open side two with Paint It Black and then bump the rest of the songs down. In lieu of that, since I can't do that, I'm gonna have to go with the UK release for this round. All right, so this was a hard one because by default, the UK version is the better album. However, for me, neither record is perfect. They both have their strengths and weaknesses. But I gotta say, if you only have room for one version, get the UK release. But if you can splurge a little bit, I highly recommend picking up the US version as well as the Flowers compilation. To me, the US Aftermath and Flowers makes for a great unofficial double album because you get almost all of the missing UK Aftermath songs, plus two additional songs from the same sessions, and then you also get some songs from the UK version of Between the Buttons. Overall, this is an excellent compilation record. Now, if you're looking to pick up a copy of the UK version, the good news is it's pretty much the standard release throughout the world, so you shouldn't have too much trouble finding a copy. Same goes for Flowers. You pretty much, it's the same thing all over the world, but unfortunately for the US version of Aftermath, it's a little harder because it was primarily only available in the US, Canada, and Mexico. So depending on where you live, it might be kind of hard. Now, over the years, there have been reissues, but it might be hard to find a new copy outside of a box set like the version I have here. So probably your best bet is a vintage copy. As far as mono or stereo, I highly recommend the mono versions for all of these albums, even though Aftermath was one of the first Stones albums to be released with almost all the songs mixed in true stereo. The reason being is that even though it's a true stereo mix, it's still pretty primitive to my ears and it can really use that Giles Martin touch. I think you know what I mean. All right, everybody, that will do it for today. Let me know your preferred version of Aftermath and why. Also, let me know what you think of the Flowers compilation with a comment down below. Until then, thank you all so much for watching, but I especially want to thank my members over on Patreon. I'm your Vinyl Geek, and I'll catch you on the flip side.